Tim was working for a rental company. Rental company had been hired to put up a huge tent. The kids put the tent up. But nobody had bothered to measure the clearance of the hydro line or the length of the pole. When we got to the hospital and the doctor finally came in and said, Tim's been electrocuted, I really thought they were going to say, and resuscitated. Tim was killed instantly, and another young man spent several weeks in a hospital in the burn unit. There was a concrete pumper crew and a, and a mixer truck uh, pouring foundations for houses. They had made contact or at least came in close proximity to one of the phases of the 138 thousand volt line. We got there probably within minutes of it happening. The damage done to the individual was pretty extensive. Uh, it certainly wasn't a pretty sight, you know, it's, uh, and you go to work in the morning not, not expecting to see anything like that. And five animals that showed up on that site um, and there was one fatality. So, you know, it's, I'm not quite sure that that foundation is worth uh, the price that they paid. Most people that uh, get hired off the street, they probably don't have a, a clue, an idea about electricity. All they know about is they come home, flick the switch, lights come on. People don't seem to understand what the consequences are unless you see it firsthand or hear about it. The, the unfortunate part with our job is if you make an accident, you're not, you might not be going home. So how do you get around that? How do you educate them to understand the consequences? I don't think anybody's really, unless you work on it day to day, is really going to understand how dangerous electricity is. And being that it's very silent, it sits up there, doesn't make any noises, it's underground, um, it's out of sight, out of mind. Until something does happen, they're not aware of what the potential power and dangers that, that exist within it. it. It doesn't just tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, next time watch out. It doesn't do that. It burns a hole in you or kills you. I've been exposed to some pretty horrific things in my younger years as I use those examples to hopefully pass on the mistakes that were made in those days so that it doesn't repeat itself. To be aware of and avoid electrical incidents, you need to know how electricity travels. It's always moving and trying to find the ground. Knowing how it moves will help you identify what is safe and what isn't. There are three basic rules to how electricity moves. It looks for the most efficient path to travel through. It takes the most efficient path to the ground, even if that means going through you. And it moves from higher to lower voltage areas once it gets to the ground. Electricity actually dissipates the same way ripples do when you throw a rock into water. When an electrical charge travels through ground, its voltage levels drop as it moves out from the source. For example, if this line had 8,000 volts at the point of contact, it may only have 7,500 volts a meter from there, 6,000 at 2 meters, and so on. This affects you because if you stood with one foot on one voltage level and one foot on another, the electricity would see you as the most efficient way to travel and would travel through you. This difference in voltage levels is called step potential. Step potential is the term used to communicate the danger of walking close to an electrical current in the ground. It's literally referring to how, when your feet contact electrified ground, they create a potential conduit for electricity to pass through. Never approach within 10 meters of any live, exposed electrical source contacting the ground. You can also be shocked by touching an electrified object, like an exposed wire or an electrified machine, your body will become the path the electricity will flow through to get to the ground. The danger of touching an electrified object and creating a path to ground is called touch potential. Your best defense is to stay away from electrified objects, or if you are in the danger zone, shuffle away at least 10 meters. But if you're in or on a vehicle that's been electrified, the safest thing to do is stay put. Only exit if it isn't safe to stay where you are. For example, if the vehicle's on fire. 
Step and touch potential are important to understand when contact has been made. But before contact, the best way to avoid incidents is to prevent them. You can do this by working at a safe distance of 10 meters or the length of an average city bus from any underground electrical equipment. For overhead power lines, you should work at least 7 meters away to stay safe and stay clear of any equipment or vehicles to eliminate touch potential. Remember that without approval from your local electric utility provider, you should maintain these limits while working. If you have approval and locates and must work closer, be aware of the heightened danger. Also, ensure you dig by hand or hydrovac if you're within one meter of underground equipment. Keep these limits of approach in mind and you'll prevent most incidents from ever happening. And remember, call or click before you dig. If we stay, stick to the rules and stick to our limits of approach in a safe distance, we can work it as safe as any other trade. Take a look around and, and identify hazards um, that, that could possibly injure or cause concerns with, with the job. Write them down, review them with the people that you're going to be working with and if possible, uh, mitigate the hazards. We want to make sure that uh, you take that second to focus and concentrate and realize, you know, there are potential dangers in here that I, I could possibly be injured or killed. Not knowing what you don't know can kill you. And you gotta ask. If you're involved in an electrical incident or just a bystander, you need to know how to respond safely. Always follow these life-saving rules. Stay calm and stop working. If you are in or on a vehicle, never leave it if it's in contact with an energy source, unless there's a fire or some reason it's not safe to stay. Treat all potential conductors as if they're still energized. Call 911. They'll notify the utility provider in your area. If you're not in or on the vehicle that made contact, stay at least 10 meters one bus length away and wait until a utility employee has given you permission to enter the area. Are you in the vehicle that made contact? If it's still running and it's safe, break contact by moving the vehicle at least 10 meters away, then park and shut down. It's also important to ensure no one else enters the danger zone. Secure the site and keep others well outside the 10 meter area. Remember, they might not be aware of the hazards or how to respond safely. If you're in an energized vehicle, don't call to others to come help you. Warn them not to approach and do your best to ensure they stay 10 meters away. Most of the time, following these rules will keep you safe until the situation is secured. Sometimes though, staying in the vehicle won't be an option. The most common reason for this would be because your vehicle is on fire. It's in these cases when you need to escape First, exit the vehicle. Be sure to do this in one movement. You need to jump away and land with both feet close together without touching the vehicle or stumbling. If you contact the ground and the vehicle at the same time or stumble and spread your feet, you will likely be shocked. Once on the ground and free of the vehicle, you need to get to a safe distance. Don't walk. Instead, shuffle or hop. If your feet separate enough to contact different voltage levels in the ground, you'll be shocked. Keep your feet close together until you gain at least 10 meters of distance, the length of a bus, from the vehicle or contacted power line. Also, ensure you don't lift your feet while shuffling. Do this and you should be able to escape safely. But remember, this is a last resort. Your safest course is to stay in or on the vehicle. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is think of your own personal safety before you dive in to, to obviously help somebody else. You definitely don't want to run into a situation where you're putting yourself in harm's way. Uh, don't go running into the scene unless you know that it's safe. There's been times where the power line is down and it might not be arcing and sparking on the ground, but it could still be energized. Electricity can be hard to understand. For the most part, it's invisible and so are the hazards but it's important to recognize these hazards and to be serious about safety around electricity. The two hazards are shock and arc flash. Shock is pretty simple to define. It's when electricity moves through someone's body. The effects of shock can be hugely different though. It all depends on the amperage you're exposed to. Different amperage or current levels will have a different effect. 
but even at a very low level, less than the average set of Christmas tree lights, a shock could result in death. If you are lucky enough to escape alive, you can still suffer resistance burns. These usually occur in the areas of your body where current entered and exited and can leave affected areas burnt and dead. That is the most horrific thing you could ever see, is watching somebody be electrocuted. It cooks you from the inside out. An arc flash, on the other hand, is really two hazards. The flash of light and heat an electrical arc causes, and the blast that follows when the arc is broken. The light and heat from an arc flash are intense and could reach up to 20,000 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt metal. The arc blast creates a sound wave of 160 decibels, which is like putting your head inside a Boeing 747 jet engine. This is followed by a pressure wave of more than 350 kilograms per square meter. The blast shoots out vaporized hot gases, molten metal and other shrapnel at speeds in excess of 1100 kilometers per hour. The blast wave itself can knock you out, causing hearing damage and even internal injuries. The superheated shrapnel, on the other hand, will fly fast enough to tear through anyone in its path. Once it does that flashover, it turns you into a fireball. You've been shown some crucial information in this video. It's critical that you take the important, potentially life-saving information with you on the job. Here are some things you must be doing every day to stay safe. How to prevent power line contacts. Call 1-800-242-3447 or visit albertaonecall.com to request locates before you disturb the ground. Safely expose buried facilities using dig by hand or hydrovac methods within one meter of any locate chevron. Look up and all around for power lines and stay seven meters safe. For information on safe distances, visit wheresthelineca And remember, always wear safety certified footwear. If you come in contact with a power line, stop all work and call 911. Move 10 meters away from the contacted power line by shuffling or hopping while keeping your feet together. If your equipment contacted the line and contact can't be broken, stay where you are. If your equipment's on fire, jump from the cab, landing on both feet at the same time. Then shuffle or hop to a safe distance, keeping your feet together. And secure the site and wait for responders to arrive. Safety is the message because uh, in, in every task, in every profession, you have to do it safely in order to get to the end of the day. So if you're, if you're handed a tool and you don't know how to use it, how can you do a task safely if you don't know how to handle the tool that you're supposed to do it with? If you see something that you think is a problem, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to say, are there safety issues here? When the work's about to begin, everything gets put aside and you concentrate and focus directly on what you're going to be working on and where you're going to be working. And um, it, it, it's, it helps a lot. It really does give you that clarity that you need to ensure that you're watching not only your back, but the backs of the other people that you're working with. You know, you can go for coffee in the morning, you can have talk about the hockey game and you can talk about lots of stuff, uh, but there's a time when you need to pay attention to what's going on. Simple as that. It wasn't for myself until I got married and started having kids and that's when I realized, you know what, I gotta, I have to make it home at night. I have a family and if a guy is thinking about his job, his task, he uses the proper barriers, proper equipment, he's gonna go home safe. Incidents involving contact with electrical lines or equipment can result in serious injury or death. By working together, your organization and NMAX can help ensure safe conditions for everyone working near electricity. For more information about our tutorial or to request a free heat session for your workers, please email safety at nmax.com or call 403-514-3700. Thank you for your commitment to safety.